So war drills, incursions, secret bases, the Indo-Pacific is clearly turning into a conflict zone. Not too long ago, that was West Asia. It was considered the most volatile region on Earth. Well, not anymore. Now West Asia is talking about peace. Two sworn regional rivals are holding secret talks, Saudi Arabia and Israel. The talks are being brokered by the United States and rumor is they're going well. Officials say it is not a question of if Riyadh will recognize Israel, it's a question of when. Now, coming from Saudi Arabia, that is huge. We're talking about the leader of the Islamic world, the custodian of Islam's holiest sites. If the Saudis recognize Israel, it will open the floodgates, sort of like a green light for other Muslim countries. Having said that, this process will be long and gradual. First, economic ties, then security partnership, and finally, diplomatic recognition. That's how it goes. That's what most reports are hinting at. So what are these ongoing secret talks about? Two things, gaming each other out and some goodwill gestures. Israel has two big bargaining chips, Tehran and Sanafir. These are two strategic islands in the Red Sea. Now Saudi Arabia wants full control of these islands and for that they need Israel's approval. Right now an international force is stationed in both these islands but if Israel agrees, Riyadh can assume full control. So that's what Saudi Arabia wants. And what does Israel get in return? For starters, Israeli businessmen will be permitted to visit Saudi Arabia, plus commercial planes from Israel will be allowed in Saudi airspace. It's a clear give and take deal. Both sides are hoping this will grow into something substantial, hopefully full diplomatic ties. But why now? Saudi Arabia is among the biggest supporters of Palestine. Their foreign policy was always clear. First carve out Palestine, then we'll discuss normalization. That's what the Saudis said. So why is the kingdom making a U-turn? Because of four reasons. Number one, the Palestine cause is not popular anymore, and I'll tell you why. Two-thirds of the Saudi population is under the age of 35. Two-thirds. For them, Israel is a reality. They never saw the Nakba or the Arab-Israeli wars. So for them, Palestine does not evoke the same emotions. But get, guess what does? Bombs fired from neighboring Yemen. That's reason number two. The Iran threat. Iranian proxies are fighting the Saudi coalition in Yemen. They're targeting Saudi oil facilities with drones. For Riyadh, that is a more pressing priority, to contain the Iranian influence. In fact, Saudi officials have admitted this. Here's what they told a US publication. And I'm quoting. If Hamas builds a relationship with Iran to protect themselves, then why don't we have a relationship with Israel against Iran to protect ourselves? That's classic strategic thinking. Your enemy's enemy is your friend. Reason number three, fear of missing out. The UAE has gone ahead and normalized relations with Israel. They've also signed a free trade deal with Israel. In five years, bilateral trade is expected to touch $10 billion. This money could have been Saudi Arabia's. Expect the UAE to beat them to it. So if Riyadh keeps waiting on the sidelines, they will lose out. Israeli money and technology will go elsewhere. They don't want that to happen, which is why they're talking. Reason number four, an over-enthusiastic broker in Washington, D.C. I'm talking about Joe Biden. He needs this deal more than Israel and Saudi Arabia. Both countries refuse to side with, with Russia, with, with the U.S., with Joe Biden against Russia. Israel's Prime Minister flew down to Moscow. The Saudi Crown Prince rejected Biden's calls. So what does Biden do? Something Vladimir Putin could not. Broker normalization talks between Saudi Arabia and Israel. Lucky for him, Crown Prince MBS is on board. Think of it as a generational shift. MBS is just 36 years old. His predecessors may have been bound by the Palestine commitment, but not him. He too has grown up in a world where Israel is an indisputable reality. In fact, let me quote from a statement from an interview this year. This is what MBS said. We don't look at Israel as an enemy. We look, at, we look to them as a potential ally with many interests that we can pursue together. But we have to solve some issues before we get to that. Solve some issues, he says. Just one, actually. It's Palestine. Where do these normalization deals leave Palestine? Without a godfather. Turkey is talking to Israel. The UAE is talking to Israel. Saudi Arabia is talking to Israel. Each and every ally of Palestine is abandoning them, basically giving Israel a free pass, which is why domestic politics in Israel becomes all the more important. 
All the flag marches, the right-wing rallies in Jerusalem, they all indicate waning support for the two-state solution. Even the current Prime Minister, Naftali Bennett, opposes it. But his political standing is not solid. This week, Israel's parliament dealt him a major blow. Lawmakers were voting on a routine proposal. A proposal to uphold Israeli law in occupied West Bank. This proposal is passed every five years. But this time, it was voted down. The opposition cobbled up 58 votes. The ruling coalition got 52. Now, don't mistake this for Palestinian activism. This is purely politics. The opposition wanted to send a message to Naftali Bennett to expose his political weakness, and that message has been delivered. So next time, the proposal will be passed, yes. But this vote does reveal Bennett's vulnerability. If he loses majority, there could be elections or another coalition, and who knows what that would look like. So Bennett needs a foreign policy win, and what better than concessions from the leader of the Islamic world. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.